So I watched the new Hellboy tonight, and I I saw the first one, and I liked it. I saw the second one in theaters, and honestly, um, <laughs> I was doing something that I shouldn't have been doing in the theater, and I wasn't really paying attention. And that's all I had uh, <clears throat> with that experience there. So I'm not really super familiar with the second movie. Um, I've never read a single comic. Uh, I, As I said, I did like the first one, and what I saw of the second one, I, I did enjoy. Now, this one, I had heard a lot of negatives about, and that had intrigued me because there were some people who were like, oh, man, people just don't have fun, this and that, and I'm usually on the side of the coin that's like, people have lost their ability to just have fun with films and I've used many examples over the now two years that I've been doing this of movies that I feel like are underappreciated like a motherfucker because people just I don't know they seem to they seem to be very hypocritical about their likes and dislikes versus you know this movie versus this movie and it's like wait you don't like that about this movie and this one, but this movie does it and you love it? Like, wait, what? I don't understand. So there's definitely a harsher criticism, especially on newer films. New films that come out get much, much harder criticism than anything that would predate the 2000s for sure. Um, especially the 80s. The 80s are like, you know, they have this god armor on them. Where, like, everything they do, everything they touch, it's like, oh, well, it's the 80s, man. It's amazing. And this and that. It's like, they have their flaws just like anything else. Anyway. But as far as the new Hellboy goes, um, this is a movie that is kind of a bummer to watch. Because I do feel like the story is sloppy. And I feel like, and I'm, you know how I am. I'm not a... I'm not a hate CGI kind of guy. I'm not a CGI hater by any means. I think CGI can be well used plenty. There's plenty of times I see CGI and I love it. And even CGI that's hated on, there's been plenty of it that I've been like, I don't see, I don't see, I don't see it. Like, I think it looks great. Like, what the fuck is the problem here is. Um, But there is some shoddy CGI in this, Um, a decent amount of it for sure. I think there's some really cool ideas here. I think there's a lot of cool stuff in this movie. Overall, it's a mess of a movie. It just feels messy. It feels disjointed. Um, It doesn't feel cohesive. But there is a lot that I did take away from it. And most of that was in character design and ideas. Like... There may have not been great execution on some of these more elaborate ideas. And some of there was. There's this like walking house. And there's these gnarly ass looking creatures with witches. And um, these big tall, you know, standing upright pig monsters. And and these, these like demon god things that come out. I know this kind of sounds like spoilers. I'm not really trying to get into spoilers, but I'm just kind of trying to give you, paint a a picture here without giving um, spoilers to the plot because I don't really feel like that. There's monsters in the movie. That's not a fucking spoiler. But, man, there's some really cool stuff with those creatures. There's some brutal deaths. There's some gnarly ass gore in here. There's some really vicious, vicious stuff. And I loved that stuff. Now, some of it, as I had said, isn't executed very well. Some of it is is kind of, um, you know, hurt by bad CGI. There's some gore that's like, oh man, I love the idea of that. I love what they were going with you know, for there, but it just doesn't look good. And it takes you out of that moment. So, so much so that you can't fully appreciate something that you wish you could have appreciated because you're, you're like on paper, this is amazing. Even seeing it, it's, um, it's a great idea. And, and I like seeing it. I just wish I had seen it better, you know, and that's a frustration. That's why I say this movie's frustrating to watch. Because the villain 
seems extremely generic. Now, I like Mila Jovovich. I've been a fan of hers. Um, I know that she's definitely been in her fair share of uh, maligned films over the, over the years, especially with the Resident Evil franchise uh, post the second film, kind of like from three on, um, which I would love to go and actually like review all six of those at some point. I'll probably get to that. Maybe maybe I'll have a patron request for the Resident Evils. I actually own all six of them. I have them all on DVD. I, I got them for like a you know a couple bucks a piece. Like whenever they went on those like three dollar four dollar things at Walmart, when I would just buy them as as they came out. Not not the first one, the second one. I actually love the first one. Um, and the second one was fine, and and then the rest, whatever. But I'd I'd love to go back and just revisit all of them six in a row. Um, but yeah, I I like Mila. I just feel like she's wasted here. I feel like a lot of things are wasted here. I feel like I feel like I'm watching a movie that, even if I don't hear there's been studio meddling, I know there's been studio meddling. Especially when you take a director like Neil Marshall, somebody who's competent, who makes cool flicks. Who made the descent and dog soldiers and um doomsday which i thought was a really cool movie that no one talked about and you know i i i, I dig neil marshall and for him to get a huge budget like this to work with a fairly popular character a character that was popular popularized more through his film adaptation than his actual comic book but still and, and as far as uh david harbour here I I actually liked the look of Hellboy more in this just because he's uglier. Um, Ron Perlman's is just more sleek, and that's more Del Toro style. And 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 the character creature designs in Del Toro's are better looking because they're mostly practical. Um, as in where in here you do have a good amount of CGI, and some of it is pretty shoddy, as I said. So it does hurt the film. But there are some really cool monsters in here that are showcased and work very well so i don't want it to just sound like all bad across the board when it comes to the characters that you're seeing i think this is just a wildly imaginative film i think this is a bunch of artists having fun and, and going nuts with character designs and whatnot and maybe kind of being restricted due to time constraints or budgets or um studio meddling changes you know and and there's a rush on things and it's like well yeah you know now that we're changing this sequence it has to be ready in six weeks before it's going into theaters or whatnot and and then you know or you run out of money or whatever there's excuses excuses i mean the finished product is really all we need to focus on as the viewers but as a film lover, as somebody who understands the complications behind the scenes and having followed so many films and the disasters that they became because of, of, of interference, of, of just meddling, of, of um, test screenings and, and cold feet and you know, dis, uh, just kind of trying to go with the trends and all these things. You can just, anytime you, almost any time you watch a movie and it feels rushed, it feels disjointed, it feels like this and that, especially if there's a competent director on board and talent be, behind the scenes, whether it be in front of the camera or behind it, um, it's usually producers and studio execs and they're, they're, you know, they're sticking their fingers into the cookie jar where it doesn't fucking belong. And this film just has that written all over it. Um, you know, I, I heard that about like Fantastic Four, the last one. I've heard that about. I didn't see that one, but I, I, there's plenty of movies that that I've seen where I'm just watching them and I'm like, this could have been amazing. This could have been awesome. This could have been something like the next Dread. That's that's what this felt like to me. It felt like something that could have been like a cult classic kind of thing in the making, like a Dread. If you haven't seen Carl Urban's Dread absolutely check the shit out of that that's why i laugh when people are like i hope they make an you know or do you think they'll ever make an american remake of the raid and i'm like they already did it's called dread check it out it's fucking fantastic um this had all the makings for that it had the level of violence and brutality it had a it had a strong female protagonist or uh, antagonist there that that could have brought something unique to the screen it, it had you know 
this talent assembled and 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 the and the design of Hellboy was there the the overall imagination behind the the art direction and all that was there if they had been able to rein in on some of the CGI stuff and maybe work out that better do some of it even more practical and then tighten up that script uh, get things a little more key he said I, I feel like I feel like as disjointed as it was I don't feel like it would have taken a ton to make it a far superior film that it is. Now, I will say, though, I had a really good time watching it, but it was a frustratingly good time. It was just like, oh, that was really cool. Oh, that yeah, was kind of a failure, but fuck, it was cool that they kind of went for that, and then it was like, oh, man, they really just kind of half-assed that, and then, oh, we're just kind of mulling over this and, and pushing past that and setting things up here that don't really ever go anywhere, and... And it's like, ah, man, come on. Like, this is just script rewrites and this is, this is bullshit, you know? And it's a, it's a shame because, you know, they kind of set this up for a sequel, which we'll never get. I mean, I can't imagine we'll ever get it. I think this thing bombed pretty hard and, and it was not a hit with uh, both critics and, um, you know, average moviegoers. So, and it didn't resonate with the, with the fan base either of the comics from what I'm, you know, um, from what I know, so this was just this was just a miss, and I feel like it was a near hit. Like it was, it was, it was right there. It had the it had the right ingredients, and they just mixed them wrong and put them in the oven for too little or too long. You know, it was just kind of like, oh, that could have been an amazing cake. <laughs> But now it's all, you know, it's, it's, it kind of tastes okay because the ingredients are good and you're just eating it and you're like, like, I could taste how this would be good if mixed right and baked at the right, you know, you know what I mean? Like, that's the way this movie feels. It feels like an undercooked, you know, sloppily mixed cake <laughs> that had the right ingredients. All right, enough of my analogies, but there you go. Uh, what'd you guys think? I also saw uh, Hobbs and Shaw today. Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. I'm not going to review that on the channel. I don't think anyone would give a shit, but I'll just kind of throw it in as a bonus here at the end for anyone who's watching. I enjoyed it. It's exactly what you expect it to be. Maybe I'll leave something on Instagram for like 10 seconds, kind of just talking about it. But it's a buddy of mine I went to the movies with, Tony Crespo. He had commented that he felt like it was Tango and Cash on steroids. And I think that's a pretty apt description. So, yeah, I, I dig it. I mean, if you saw the trailer and you're like, I like what I saw in the trailer. I just want more of that. that that's the film that they promised is the film that they deliver 100%. And that girl in that movie is smoking fucking hot. Holy Jesus. That was definitely selling me on the film. And the film is, ex you know, as I said, it's exactly what you expect. It's two guys with huge egos and, you know, reflexing their muscles, wanting to punch people, this and that. So um, it, it was fun. I enjoyed it. So there you go, a little bonus thrown in at the end. I never do that, but uh, yeah, I had nowhere else to do it. And I'm going to bed, and I'll fucking not talk about it tomorrow. So <laughs> there you go. Anyway, guys, all right, adios, and good night.